Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you um, just a couple of fun little things that I picked up on my last trip over to Joanne Fabrics. Uh, super cute, and I will show you what I got and how I'm going to use those pieces. So stick around. and welcome to My Handmade Lifestyle. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. And on this YouTube channel, you can expect to find all sorts of makes, bakes, and a little bit of gardening. We here at Patty Mac Makes like to celebrate all things analog. So if you're also searching for that analog life in this crazy digital world, well, you've come to the right place. This is going to be a shorter version of um, what we call a podcast. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, I don't have anything really new to share with you that I wanna share with you at this point in terms of a new make. The reason is we've had like two weeks of uh, dry warm weather here in virginia beach and i have used that opportunity to uh, <clears throat> seriously clean out my garage and my shed and i put a pile of stuff out on the curb last night for the bulky trash collection it looks like we're moving out we're not moving anywhere but the amount of stuff that i was able to get rid of is crazy <laughs> i've just I'm at this point, we've been in this house for six years. I'm like, you know what? Stuff's gotta go. If I can't use it, haven't used it, we're carrying it around. I don't have the space for it anymore. I don't have the energy to keep it clean, to keep it or it just, it has to go. Uh, so I've really been, I guess getting into that whole, does it spark joy thing and so much stuff that I've had does not spark joy. It just makes me aggravated. And so it's out. So there's been some things to go in the trash. There's been an awful lot of donations. And I'm also going to try selling some things on Facebook marketplace. I don't know how that's going to go. I'm going to try it out and see what I can sell. Um, so yeah, the, the great cleanup of 2019 continues. It never stops, but that's not why you're here. Okay. I'm going to stop rambling. Let me show you what I picked up. Uh, at my last trip to Joanne's. And I went over there to meet up with uh, a young woman. Uh, her name is Madeline, and she's a professional model here in the area. Um, when I photograph knitwear and that type of stuff, I like to work with professional models. I know that most people wear their own stuff and take their own pictures, um, and that's fine. Uh, I like to put my things on to models because, you know, models just, they're models for a reason. I, they look better than I do on camera. Um, and I feel like it shows my hard work in knitting or sewing or whatever it is I've got. It shows it off in the best possible light. And that's why I like to work with models and models are fun. You know, I, I'm truly, friends with the people that I photograph. They're not just random people. I actually know them. Um, I, I become close to them. I feel like they're friends. And I only work with a handful of people at a time because I do develop that relationship with them. But anyway, Madeline. So Madeline is interesting. Um, she's a graduate student. <clears throat> she uh, is a ballroom dancer. She's really interesting um, and she's very artistically minded. And so we're going to collaborate on this project. And I'm not going to say a lot about it, but um, I'm going to do the photos. And then uh, I'm knitting a skirt. I've never knitted a skirt before. So I'm knitting this skirt. So we met up at Joanne's and, <clears throat> you know, she knows how she wants this outfit to be. She's designing it. I said, you pick what works and then I'll knit the skirt for it. And um, we wound up getting this. And this is Big Twist, which is the um, Joanne store brand. And I really like this yarn. I've used it in a couple of projects. Let's see here, if you can see that. 
So it gives you an idea of how many skeins you'll need for projects. Here is the, um, the technical information. They recommend that you knit it on a 13. Uh, I found that to be a little too um, tight in the gauge for my taste. So uh, the swatch, I went up to a 15 and it's knitting a lot easier for me. So I'm going to um, go ahead, I've done enough, I can get gauge. I'm going to uh, check my gauge, I have her measurements and I have a little free uh, skirt pattern I found. I have to adjust it in terms of the gauge because it's different, um, but I'm kind of excited about that. I'm gonna cast that on this weekend and get rolling with that. Uh, this big twist, this is like a competitor to uh, Lion Brand Thick and Quick. Uh, this I don't think is quite as big or as heavy as Thick and Quick. It's in the same group, it's a six. Um, the yardage is comparable, it's 105 yards or 96 meters. This wool is 80% <clears throat> acrylic, 20% wool, which I, I like that mix. I think that's a good mix for everyday chunky knits. I knit a lot of stuff in this kind of stuff. Wool, I uh, actually have a couple of really cool shawls that I made last year. Um, I'm gonna get them out now that the garage is clean. I have a place to put them out for block. So they're gonna go out on block and get finished and I'm going to get those photographed this fall. Of course, you can't do it when it's 100 degrees. I mean, there's just no way. You would just be sweating. So probably be closer to Christmas before I can photograph them, but that's okay. I can get the patterns written and ready and I can go ahead and film all of my uh, tutorials because I want to film tutorials and how to make them, blah, blah, blah. So all of that can be done <laughs> and ready to go. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to make that skirt with Maddie. And um, as soon as that's ready, I'll let you know. I'm going to put pictures up of her now. These are photos that I did for my, <clears throat> she's my tech editor. She's also my friend. She's a knitwear designer. She goes by SS Knits Online. And last year she entered this uh, sweater in a contest that was supposed to be for um, Vogue Knitting Live. And um, she didn't place in the contest, but um, everybody really remarked on the photos, which I thought was cool. Uh, but did it lead to a job? No, of course not. I live in the wrong <laughs> part of, the world to be doing knitwear photos. Uh, Laura Nelkin told me that. I have done photography for uh, Laura Nelkin and she loved my work. She was like, oh my God, you really get it. Most photographers do not know how to do knitwear photos. You totally get it. You're really good at this, but you live in the wrong place. So <laughs> anyway, um, the photos of the sweater you're looking at now, these are photos that Maddie and I did uh, for Joan. And uh, the sweater was purchased by uh, Webs and uh, they could not use my pictures. They wanted to reshoot on their own, that's fine. I think it's kind of a shame, but um, they reshot. And the, the sweater is available. I will link over to that in the, uh, the description below. So if you're interested in knitting that particular sweater, um, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's 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 the yarn talk and the knitting talk. Let me show you. Um, let me show you what else I got. As you know, I've been sewing. I'm really into the sewing right now, and I um, made this little collection of um, projects out of a jelly roll. This is part of that. Um, I also have this little purse and. If I redid it, I would do the tabs smaller. They look like little ears kind of, but that's all right. But it's like, I want to wear it as a crossbody bag. Um, and so I wound up getting these little pieces of hardware and you know, they'll go on here. And finding the strap is hard. Um, I didn't want to order anything. So I wound up buying this um, black, like strapping material, I guess it is. And so I thought, well, that'll work okay. So I'm probably gonna get out my old sewing machine because I don't think the little singer will handle sewing through that, but I think the old one will. And I'm just going to um, you know, run it through there 
and make it as a little crossbody bag. It won't be adjustable, that's okay. And um, yeah, then I can use that little purse. So those things I got to finish that project. And when I finish all of these projects, I'll do a video on stuff I made with a jelly roll. Because mostly what you see with a jelly roll is just quilting stuff. And I, I did some different things. Um, I alluded to, did, was it this video? It was the other video. I, some, I film more than one video at a time when I do these. Um, I just filmed about my ironing board. I gave my ironing board a makeover. I'm gonna swing over so you can see it. Isn't that pretty? So um, check out the video on how I did the ironing board makeover. It's super cool. I'll link to that for you. This is a new embroidery project that I picked up. And um, I saw this on this little vintage aisle now that they have in Joann's. And I thought she was so cute. I picked her up. I don't know that I'm going to stitch on the provided fabric because it's kind of, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Yeah. It's kind of um, heavy weight. Uh, yeah, and I generally stitch on um, like a linen, on a linen weight. Uh, so I'm probably going to um, trace that onto a lighter weight of fabric and put her in that. And, you know, it's one of the fun things about embroidery. You can just trace and do whatever, but um, they do give you your thread your embroidery floss and it has a little hoop to finish her off so anyway that's coming sooner than later I'm ready to work on that um so when I met Maddie at Joanne's they were having like this massive sale as they always are but sometimes the sales some sales are definitely better than other sales and um what I have started doing is when they uh, run something where they'll have the uh, embroidery floss and they won't they won't give you the price in the flyer and they'll just say too low to show that's when I buy embroidery floss and I just go in and I'll buy a whole bunch of colors I'm gonna see if I can find it in the book and I'll show you what I'm talking about um, I go in and I just buy a whole big selection of uh, colors and I put them in my little keeper and I'll do a video that shows you how I keep all my embroidery stuff. Um, and then I just always have stuff on hand and maybe it matches, <clears throat> I don't see it now. Maybe it matches what's in a, a pattern, maybe it doesn't. A lot of times I'll just do what I want. I mean, this is kind of like this, this is from, <clears throat> this is a mashup. So the, the flowers are a free pattern that somebody sent out. And the other part was a sampler in the blueprint class that I took, which was the uh, embroidery startup library. And that is a great class. She's very thorough. And I made that using that class and then I just did the flowers. So, and I, you know, I just picked whatever colors I wanted to use. But anyway, uh, on this sale, I just got a whole bunch of stuff and I'm just gonna like, I'm not gonna show them separately. Just show you like the little bouquet of floss. And they were like 52 cents or something. So um, if you like to embroider, if you wanna get into embroidery, watch those uh, Joann's uh, sales flyers when you get them. If you don't get the stuff at home, get on that list, it's worth it. Um, you get extra coupons, you gotta have coupons at Joann's. And um, anyway, I got this for like 52 cents. You can't beat that. So that's how I buy my embroidery floss. In fact, look on the, on the ticket and see how much they were. Uh, I'm, I stand corrected, 56 cents. So 56 cents. And then I got an additional 20% off everything. So that was really, that was a good deal. Uh, I also picked up one of these disappearing ink. Uh, so when I transfer a pattern, I trace the pattern onto the fabric that I'm going to stitch. And then I use these disappearing ink pens 
uh, to draw it out. But the one I've got is kind of a fat tip, and this one is a fine point. So I'm excited to get that out and try it. Um, yeah, sometimes the tip is just a little too fat, and I don't know. So I got that one to try out. And then um, the remainder of what I have in here is fabric, just what I need. Um, this is so cute. This is actually like, um, it's probably baby stuff, nursery fabric, but you know, I just live in a world where I wish things were sweet and nice like that. So I bought this and it was called something crazy like the baby forest friends or something. And I mean, just the name got me. So I had to have it, but I mean, look, it's got um, a fox and a hedgehog and an owl and a bunny rabbit. And even though I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the bunny rabbits right at the moment. This light, I'm really having some trouble. Sorry about the light. Um, the bunny rabbits really wreaked havoc in my gardens this year. Uh, I'm coming up with a plan to deal with them, but he is cute. So, um, yeah, the forest friends. Oh, and a little bitty bear. So, I mean, it's just, gosh, I mean, but the, the fox, the owl, and the hedgehog, I'm, you know, basically, I'm done. I had to have this, and it was way marked down. It was so inexpensive. Let's see if I can find it. Um, baby forest animal friends. Who can resist that? So I got that for uh, $3.59 a yard. Regular price on that was $8.99. So I got it for $3.59. Uh, got two yards of it, maybe two and a half. I'm going to do... Um, like my fall pillowcase out of that. So cute. Um, I'm going to film it as a video for you when I get there, which is gonna be soon, because I want that fall pillowcase. Um, and then this was, um, this was my impulse buy. I saw this, here's something I noticed. <clears throat> no two Joannes are the same, so I was under the assumption that, uh, oh, I'll just go to my Joann's that's closest to me, which is the one in Hilltop, if you're here locally. Um, it was a good store, it is a good store. It's where I get most all of my stuff. I was like, I'll just shop there, it's closest. Um, then when I met Maddie, um, she lives closer to the one in Chesapeake. And I said, well, I'll meet you over there because she's going to school and she's working and all of this stuff. And plus, when we did that photo shoot before, she drove all the way over here for me. So I'm like, you know, I'll drive over there for you. So I went to the Greenbrier section, if you're here in a local. They have a very different selection of stuff over there. They actually have a lot more. I was surprised. More fabric, more yarn. Um, I think the Hilltop store has more like ready-made kind of stuff where maybe you just like slap a little bit of paint on something or you just buy finished goods like i bought my little um hanging plant holders i'll link that video up here you can see how i made those um that kind of stuff but the greenbrier store i mean they really had things i had not seen before and one of those things was this beautiful vintage look fabric that is like all um, postage stamps. And I just loved it. Oh my gosh, it's just so pretty. And I knew I wanted to buy something to go with it as a contrast. I always think bags, because <laughs> that's what I make. Um, and I looked and looked and I was really struggling to match something to it. Um, and the whole pattern matching that is such an advanced skill. I'm not there. This is polka dots. I can do polka dots. Um, but I wound up saying, remember your own tip, which is to go to the salvage and look at all of the colors. If you go to the salvage of your fabric, they will have every color that's in the print right here. And so then what you can do is you can go along that uh, big wall in the back of the store where they have all the less expensive 
quilting cotton to match up. And so that's what I did. I just started looking by um, group to figure out what I really wanted. And I started just laying it up next to the other colors. And I decided to go with a solid because this is so busy. I just, and I want this to be front and center. I mean, look at this. There's so much going on. It's really, it's really cool fabric. I kind of wish I'd bought more, but anyway, all of that. So I wound up going with this and I just thought that it pulled the most of everything out. Because when you do your contrast, you want, you want what is going to pop this. So I thought that popped best of anything. You know, it, like it pops with the blues, it really pops the yellows, of course. It pops everything, the reds. And you can see, let's see if I can show you this. So if I lay it up there, see how it's almost number seven? It was as close to number seven as I could get. And so that's what I went with. And I think it really does work. Um, I, I, I say it's gonna be a bag. I don't know, I got so many bags right now. I don't know what to do with all of them. <laughs> Maddie's suggestion, which I thought was a good one, was like, she was like, oh, that would make really pretty um, vintage looking uh, curtains for the kitchen. And I was like, ooh, you're right. But I didn't buy enough of it to do that, so. And I just made those um, bird curtains last year. So, hmm, I don't know. I love it though, but it would be cute in the kitchen, wouldn't it? Anyhow, okay, that's to be determined. That's doing what I tell you not to do, which is don't buy stuff unless you have a project in mind. <laughs> I don't take my own advice, as you can see. Okay, um, so that is... Um, that's, that's what's new. That's the episode for today. Uh, I, I know I really ran through that really fast. Uh, I wanted to check in with you. I really like to keep these videos coming out every week. And I'm just grabbing this. I, I'm sort of, you know, I'm cleaned up. I put a little makeup on my face because I'm going out. I have a doctor's appointment. I have to leave in like 10 minutes. So I'm gonna wrap this video up and I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Um, I appreciate you being here, it means so much. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video, do all the stuff, and um, I'll see you around in the next video. Okay, have a wonderful day, evening, whatever.